Hi, this is Adi from IFM Australia and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use our maintenance tool with the IFM Ecomat controller. So the first step always is to download the firmware on these controllers. So you can find the firmware on our website. So simply type in the part number uh, and then it takes you to this page. Then if you scroll down, click on the downloads tab and then select or click on target and documentation package. And if you're logged in via your username, it directly takes you to this page. And within this page, you select the controller uh, that you want to download the firmware for. Uh, in my case, it's a CR711S. So I simply click on this, um, on, this, uh, on this link and it starts the download process. Once you've downloaded the target and the firmware package from our website, uh, then you need to make sure that you have the latest maintenance tool. So the latest maintenance tool version should be version 3.7.0.15. And this is available for download on our website. So once we've got that latest version, now I'll take you through the steps. So firstly, right click on Ecomat Mobile, load add-in. Now add the Ethernet add-in, click on add. And select Ethernet, right click load that in and now you select Ecomat controller and now you will see we've got this first interface for the Ecomat controller by default the IP address for these devices are 192.168.82.247 then just simply click on connect and you can see now it's connected and lots of other items pop up on the left hand side so I'll talk, take you through these step by step system information under system information, you've got device description, which includes the part number, the hardware revision, um, and the serial number of the device. Then you've got the software overview, which explains what is the software version running on this controller, and other files like the configuration file, IO mapping. The next one is the software tab. So under software, the very first option we've got is firmware update. So in this firmware update page, you will see it tells you the current version of the firmware on the controller, which is version 3.0.0.5. Now, if you want to now update the firmware uh, on the device, you simply, simply click on the firmware file and it will give you this uh, notification. Just say OK. And then I have downloaded that a package from the website on my on my desktop just a note usually the downloaded file would be a zip file so i would highly recommend that you unzip this main file essentially extract the files from the zip file and then it creates a folder like this so within this folder there's a another zip folder which is called cr711s underscore version 3005 no need to extract the files from these, this zip file. Just click on it and select open. The maintenance tool will automatically detect all the files within that zip file and it will start loading the firmware as you can see. Okay, so now you can see the firmware update has been successfully done. So you can just click on okay. So once you've downloaded the firmware, the next step you would want to do is say, change the baud rate of the CAN interface or change the IP address. And this is where you can do it under devices, go to interfaces here, and then in here you can make the changes. So let's change this baud rate back to 250. And then you can click on update and this will apply the changes. But before I do that, just a quick note, you see this service option here. So this is unticked at the moment. Um, and the reason we have the service option is if you are planning to use any of the CAN interfaces to download the program in the controller, you need to have that ticked. But if you're only going to use the Ethernet interface, I would highly recommend to untick all of the service options, even on the serial port. So once you have done the changes that you want, like changing the baud rate or node ID to suit your application, then you just click on update it comes up with this window 
just says that the changes have been successfully assigned do you want to proceed for example and just say okay and what happens now is this will be written in your com configuration file uh, in the controller so now you can see it's been successfully changed so once that's done you can say okay now the next thing that you would like to change is the io mapping uh, say for example there would be certain ios that you want to make safety the others non-safe so that can also be done via the maintenance tool now and it's highly recommended that you do it through the maintenance tool so if you click on io mapping now you can see the same sort of window here you've got some inputs which are selected by default as all standard so now i can change them around to say safety uh, and then i can change some of the user leds also to safety uh, the output group switches to safety as well and once i've done that uh, you can just click on update once again and you can see the io mapping has been successfully updated so again these changes are then applied to the io mapping file within the controller okay so once that's done uh, these are the, the two basic steps that you would like to do after the firmware is updated so the next part i want to show you is uh, once you are happy with this configuration how can you then take all this configuration and clone it on other controllers so in that case this comes in handy like load from device function so here you have two options uh, you have package file or you have single segments in this case i would say single segments uh, you, you have the option to choose the file individually i can certainly select multiple files like communication interface configuration io mapping which i'm sure i have changed uh, and then i can click on load and what it does now it combines all those files and put it in a zip file for me um, so now i can go to the desktop and i can just say cr711s uh, config okay so now i can save that and now it says it has been successfully loaded from the device so now you can take that same uh, zip file that we just created and load it onto another controller using load to device function so you can click on software file now and point it to that particular file that we just created which is cr711s gone open it and then it gives you the options of what it's actually there in that zip file and then even after that you can select which files you want to load so we select both in this case and then you can click on load and you can see it has now successfully transferred this to the device so this way you can create a configuration file once you're happy with all the settings load it from the device and then take that configuration zip file and load it to other controllers. Thank you very much for watching this video.